Hello class and welcome to our presentation, Plato's Scent to Knowledge. So as we learned in our previous presentation, Plato argued that the ultimate goal of human life is to achieve enlightenment. And what is enlightenment? So enlightenment for Plato means to attain perfect knowledge of the eternal forms. And this is achieved through philosophical contemplation and dialogue as the Socratic method is employed to extract pre-existent knowledge of the forms from within the immortal soul. But achieving enlightenment for Plato is a rigorous task, and only a few rare people are capable of such a feat. Nevertheless, in the Republic, Plato argues that there are a series of stages one must take to ascend closer to perfect knowledge. And this system is often referred to as Plato's ascent to knowledge. And in the next few slides, we will review a diagram of this ascent to knowledge. So here we go. As you may recall from previous lectures, Plato was a dualist philosopher, so he argued for the existence of two parallel realities. So the first reality is our material reality, which Plato refers to as the realm of becoming and the realm of being, which is the infinite perfect reality. And as you may further recall, the realm of being contains the eternal forms or the perfect essences or archetypes upon which this world is built. And the highest form or the ultimate form, which is the source of the other forms, is referred to as the summum bonum or the highest good. So the goal of life we're going to find is for people to become enlightened or to achieve knowledge of the forms and ideally the highest form or the summum bonum. And why do we want to achieve this? Because remember, the realm of being is the realm of perfect knowledge. So the forms are perfect knowledge. Whereas in the realm of becoming, if we use our senses and observation, the only thing that we can achieve is imperfect knowledge. So if we rely upon our knowledge gained through the realm of becoming, we will never become enlightened. So with this in mind, let's talk about the four stages uh, that lead to enlightenment. So the first stage or level one is the stage of unquestioned belief. And this represents most of humanity. That is, most of humanity take truth at face value. They basically accept what they are taught and they do not question it. And it is at this stage that Plato argues that people are completely ignorant of the, of the existence of the eternal forms. The second level of enlightenment would be level two, the um, stage of unquestioned belief. And this represents people who begin to question their beliefs, that is intellectual cultural authority, such as the Sophists. That is, as you may remember, the Sophists questioned the Athenian culture and kind of moral standards. So they kind of achieve level two status because again, they're beginning this process of questioning um, the kind of societal values in which they lived. And as a result, they became uh, intellectual or cultural authorities because they were then able to convince people at level one of the truth value of their claims. But as you can see, the sophists, according to Plato, are still unenlightened because they're getting their knowledge from the realm of becoming, and therefore they have only imperfect knowledge. It is only when people ascend to level three or the level of pure reasoning that they're able to um, transcend um, the realm of becoming and therefore achieve some kind of knowledge and awareness of the divine forms. And uh, level three represents uh, the rare individual. That is, again, um, only a small collection of people who uh, have the gifts necessary to ascend to that level of reasoning. And then there are those who represent the rarest individuals or who um, achieve what uh, Plato refers to as the level of understanding or those who are able to grasp 
um, the forms and even catch some kind of glimpse of the highest good. Now, some of you may be saying to yourselves, hmm, this sounds eerily familiar. Well, it should because we all read the allegory of the cave um, earlier on in the semester. And what we're going to find is that the allegory of the cave is actually an illustration um, to kind of use to explain this ascent to knowledge um, model. So as you can see in purple, the cave represents the realm of becoming whereas the upper world in the allegory represents the realm of being. The prisoners are people at level one, the level of unquestioned belief. And the puppeteers are those at level two. The fire in the cave represents our material sun. That is the sun that we look at every day. So the prisoners and the puppeteers, their level of knowledge is stuck in the material world of becoming. The liberated prisoner, on the other hand, is the person who has reached the third level. That is one who has ascended uh, out of the cave and into the upper world. And then the enlightened uh, refers to those who are able to actually gaze at the sun itself, which is representative of the highest good. So speaking of the summum bonum or highest good, in the allegory of the cave, the true sun of the upper world is the summum bonum, the ultimate form or the highest good. And this is how Plato describes it. He says, the sun is also inferred to be the universal author of all things beautiful and right, parent of light and of the Lord of light in the visible world, the immediate source of reason and truth in the intellectual. So in other words, the summum bonum is the source of all reality, the source of truth, and essentially the author of the world both the realm of being and the realm of becoming. And as is further indicated at the conclusion of the allegory of the cave, Plato teaches that it is the duty of the enlightened to govern society. So once someone becomes enlightened, they are not to just escape into the mountains and live the rest of their days. They actually have a duty to return to society to guide the rest of humanity.